Welcome back, I'm the Dungeon Coach. I'm here to help lower that DC in your game with some outside the box ideas. And today we're talking about skills in your game. Skills are massively important in Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons, and DC 20 RPG, but I have taken skills and the concept of some issues that I've seen with skills in different game systems and I'm trying to fix them. You might like some of these adjustments and use them in your games, whether it be Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, or whatever, or you might just be like, oh, this DC 20 thing sounds cool. It is pretty cool, you'll see. But what we're gonna talk about is some shuffling around of attributes and skills that I've done. Some innovations I've done to knowledge-based checks that usually don't get enough time in the spotlight. And I've made some big moves on perception checks, initiative checks, and how that whole thing works to really fix some issues that perception is such a huge thing. And I'm gonna share with you guys a variable attribute rule that it might just blow your mind on how skill checks work and how you can think of outside the box ways to use them, or you might be doing it yourself already. Let me know. Here we go. First up, I'm going to show you all the big picture of what's going on here with all of the different attributes. Because in DC 20 RPG, there are four attributes that I have taken and merged. I've done a video on that. In general, it is might, which is kind of like strength, agility, which is kind of like dexterity, uh, charisma is charisma, and intelligence is basically wisdom and intelligence combined together. Wisdom in DD is usually this perception of the world around you, street smarts type of thing. I have taken the perception part of the world around you out of it, and that, as you can see, is in a prime situation. We'll talk about about that too. Um, and now intelligence truly represents your mind. And based on the skills that you select, which we'll talk about too, it's gonna show how intelligent you are and what aspects of intelligence you have. And if you're wondering where constitution is, that's a great question because why is constitution an attribute whenever that has no skills associated with it, right? So constitution is representative of your might and agility combined together in what's called fortitude and your overall, which that represents your overall physical body and grit represents your overall mental fortitude is how strong your mind is with intelligence and charisma averaged together. Your prime modifier is your highest attribute of any of your attributes. So if might is your highest, that's for your prime modifier. If your charisma is the currently the highest and it's at a three or a four, your prime is that. Because this represents your overall experience as an adventure and how sharp of a wit you have and how aware you are of things. But we'll go ahead and get into that first. So as you can see, awareness is perception. Perception of the world around you, how perceptive are you? I've tied it to the prime modifier for a couple of reasons. I always hate just these uh, perception checks and oh, I don't want to make a perception check because I'm not as perceptive as this person or that person or whatever. And in general, your character could be wildly unperceptive of th th certain things. And perception checks are just the biggest check in the game. And anytime I'm making a character, it feels bad if I don't pick perception because I know that it's so important and that just feels right. I want all the skills to be balanced and to be some sort of use to each of them. And perception checks just are on too much of a pedestal to assign them to a certain stage. That, and then if someone wants to be really perceptive, but then they want to have a low wisdom score or vice versa, or they want to have a high wisdom score because they're a, cl a cleric or a druid or something, so they have high wisdom, and then they're just by default also very perceptive, and then now the group's going to them to try and be the lookout or looking around. No, everyone across the board will have basically, as their prime modifiers would all be about the same, whoever's highest stat is all gonna be about the same if you're all the same level. So at a baseline, everyone will be the same amount of perceptive. So if you're talking about going and looking for stuff and making perception checks and all that kind of stuff, it, it does happen very frequently, so that solves the problem and levels the playing field. But perception or awareness in this case still is a skill. And in DC 20, it, just like how Pathfinder works, there's five levels of skills. Every time you put a point, you level up your skills to get plus two, plus four, plus six, plus eight, plus 10. So you can invest, if you wanna be, and you want a role player, you wanna tactically be a perceptive person, you can put points into awareness. I just think this puts everything in a really nice level playing field for everyone to have your prime modifier be associated with those perception checks. And then if somebody wants to be really perceptive and they wanna go down that road and invest points into that, they can. Best of both worlds and it really fixes, I think some issues with perception being so prevalent. Also a quick little time out here. This chart is the alpha of DC 20 RPG. If you're interested in any of the stuff I've said in this video and other videos, or if you're still on the fence, it's okay. Just sit there, hang back, check it out. This game system and development is entirely supported by my patrons. And there's just a brand new feature that's added to uh, Patreon. That's actually, uh, I'm, I'm beta testing it right now for Patreon is a free membership tier. You can join Patreon for free. You sign up and you can get alerts with some stuff. Every time I make a post on Patreon, 
round and you can kind of get a pulse check, but without paying anything. And then if something piques your interest, you can join at whatever tier you're interested in and then go back to doing what you're doing. Because in a very short amount of time, I'm going to be releasing the alpha on Patreon and there's a whole different tiers. You can check out all the rewards there and keep, keep up to date with that. And then eventually I'll be releasing the beta to all patrons. So keep checking it out, see what you like, and then dip your toes in the water whenever you feel like you want to give it a shot. But let's get back to the skills. Before we get into this knowledge situation here where the knowledge, wait, knowledge had, what's not, knowledge had sub skills, skills and sub skills. That's interesting. We'll talk about that here in a second. But if you've noticed, I have shuffled some things around. I have paired intimidation with might. Intimidation is now with the might attribute or strength in the case of uh, other games. Uh, but I think that that's a better home for it. As far as a default place for it to go, usually whenever I've, in my experience, again, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on this. Most of the time, the people that use intimidation very much more so makes sense to use a strength based or in this case might based intimidation because people with high charisma that are good with words might not have to resort to intimidation tactics to threaten somebody they might just be able to talk with them regularly and it might be out might be inappropriate for them to use intimidation but a strength based character someone who's very strong and no uh, intimidating it makes a little more sense then. but just wait till we talk about the variable attribute rule and then that's going to be real fun you also see a new thing right here trickery trickery is basically the dc20 version of sleight of hand hand, but a lot cooler. But we'll talk about trickery here in a second. I want to stay t talking about the big picture here. Stealth is stealth. That's pretty obvious. Uh, animal, animal handling. First of all, animal handling. It feels weird to say the word handling. I don't know. So make an animal check. Make a, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about religion check, medicine check, animal check. It just feels better to say animal instead of animal handling. I don't know. But uh, I have it as a charisma based check because your empathy, your interaction with other creatures, other people, other animals, right? This is a charisma based thing for me. So by default, your interaction with animals, just like your interaction with people is charisma is charisma. And just like we've also been talking about, all that interacting with people gives you a good sense and pulse check of people, which means also insight is going to be a charisma based thing. And I don't know about you, but it just feels way better to not have wisdom in the picture at all. I love having four attributes and the more that I've been building out this game system with only four attributes, it just feels better because you don't need constitution because it's not even, a, there's no skills associated with that. And wisdom and intelligence already compete against each other in some weird ways that feels kind of weird to describe to somebody else. And I know and I get it and I've described it perfectly fine before. Oh, and wisdom is this and intelligence is that, but it just ultimately, in my opinion, feels better to have intelligence be your smarts and charisma be your interaction with others. And in that interaction would be insight to be able to read people. And I've also combined together persuasion and deception because the only difference between persuasion and deception is if you're okay at lying or not, right? If you're, I'm going to convince somebody to do something with a lie or with not a lie. So I think those are too similar in general and I'm, I have combine them into an influence check. You're trying to influence somebody to do something with your words, that's it, simple. Because it's always felt weird in some ways, and you know what I'm talking about when you're at the table and somebody's trying to describe something, but they know that they're good with deception, so they try and make it into a lie, or then maybe they're good with persuasion, so they're trying to not lie, but they really are lying, but then maybe the circumstances are different, so they're not lying, but they are. It's weird. Or like what they're saying is technically true, but they're lying is what they're dressed up as, so it gets weird. Anyways, then you have intelligence with investigation, is your, your deduction and kind of moving things around, seeing how things work. Work, right? Medicine is the same, survival is the same, and then we have knowledge. In general, knowledge is how knowledgeable is your character. You can put points into knowledge and get more knowledgeable, and we'll talk about these sub-knowledge skills here in a second, but in Dungeons and Dragons, it is a very much uh, how proficiency works, is you choose proficiencies, you have them, and they just level up over time. That's it, you don't have to try anything at them, you don't have to level them up, you don't get to choose. Once you have it, it just levels up as your proficiency bonus levels up, as you level up, right? Um, in Pathfinder and in DC20, you actively put more points into and level up things to gain more uh, in DC20. It's called mastery in a skill. So if you have no mastery in a skill, you have a plus zero and all you add is the attribute. So you'd make it a, a knowledge check would be your intelligence modifier. That's it. But every one level of mastery you gain into the skill gets you a plus two. So you have plus two, plus four, plus six, all the way up to a plus ten higher level. So if you don't want your character to be very knowledgeable, don't 
don't put any points into it and you'll have no known plus modifiers to knowledge whenever you're trying to make some sort of check about some general knowledge based stuff which i think that does happen a lot and in general that would be a, a flat intelligence check but now with it, having a knowledge skill it could be a general knowledge check but here's the cool part and here's how these sub skills work whenever you use one skill point to put it into knowledge to increase your knowledge mastery to one you know most everyone starts off at zero so whenever you have one mastery something cool happens you gain instantly two free points to put into anything else you want so basically whenever you put one point into knowledge it flip multiplies into two little baby points to put into the little baby sub skills. So let's say I'm a druid and I want to be more knowledgeable and I'm going to put one point into knowledge, but I get two points to put into these free ones to further express what my knowledge is. How smart am I in what thing? So let's say this druid wants to go into nature and occultism. Occultism is like the opposite of religion. It's like different workings of cults and different things. Maybe my backstory has some sort of cult that has tried to infiltrate and degrade the forest in some way. So I want to have nature so I'm knowledgeable with nature and I want to know about these cults. So with one skill point, I put it into knowledge and I gain mastery in knowledge, nature, and occultism all at once. Because intelligence-based checks a lot of times, especially if you don't have a dungeon master that really puts weight into that and lets you have some more lore bombs that gets dropped and more information to be shared or finding cool ways to use these skills, they really seem like a waste. Why would you put one skill point in D&D? Why would you put one skill point into religion when you could be putting it into perception or athletics or acrobatics or stealth or other things that are going to come up more and have more meaning to them? So in this way, you can put one skill point into knowledge and still pick up religion and something else. And in general, you see there's this custom lore bit. On the character sheet in DC20, there are blanks on the character sheet for custom lore bits that are open for you to make whatever you want. If you want to be specifically dragons, you've made a ranger and they are you have all this history of hunting down and tracking dragons you could put in dragons again work with your dungeon master on this but you could have a very specific lore based on your character's backstory or based on the campaign settings backstory about some sort of faction or some sort of region and because these points are a little bit more free and you have multiple points to put in you put a point in knowledge and you get all these extra points it's very valuable or at least more valuable than it would have been if it was still a one-to-one -one points compared to these other skills i don't know i think it's cool but again let me know what you guys think down in the description because this is in alpha and we are play testing this and we are going through and I'm really looking to the community for feedback. I'm looking to my patrons for feedback to really make this game as best as possible. But now let's talk about that trickery situation. I'm going to show a little bit more of the document here. This is talking about each of the different things. We have might with athletics and kind of what it does, all the different things it pertains to, intelligence or sorry, intimidation, agility with acrobatics. But now here's trickery. Sleight of hand is a cool thing. It almost feels like a little bit more of a magic trick, like sleight of hand, like I'm palming a card or something and you can't see oh it's a car you know and those picking pockets and other things like that sleight of hand sneaky hand movements I like trickery. Basically, you're deceiving somebody with physical means instead of verbal means, because deception in D&D would be lying to somebody with your mouth, like you're saying words, it's a lie, you're trying to lie to somebody. You are basically trying to trick somebody with what you're physically doing. So trickery covers nonverbal means of deceiving others, such as pickpocketing, concealing an object on your person, hiding it on yourself, other forms of physical deception, which also covers sleight of hand and all that kind of stuff, concealing an object and hiding an object, disarming a trap, it would be a very trickery type thing. And and also, side note, in DC20, traps and checking for traps is a very smooth process because you can use awareness to look for a trap and then you see one. Oh, I've spotted one. And then you can use investigation to try and determine, right, and use your intelligence with investigation, right? So again, we've, we've done prime modifier, looking around for just general with awareness. And then now I've seen the trap and I go over to the trap now. I'm using intelligence investigation on the trap to see if I can deduce and determine how the trap works mechanically. And let's say I succeed on that and I know how it works now. <sighs> okay, now I'm going to use trickery, which is an agility, dexterous hand-based movements, to trickery, which is a very sneaky-based thing. Traps, picking locks, etc. And now I'm using a trickery check to try and disarm. So it really hits the spectrum instead of just, oh, I'll make an investigation check, make another investigation check, make a thief, like uh, all this kind of, it's a very seamless process of awareness, ooh, there it is, investigation, I know how it works, trickery, Disarm. And then we keep going through stealth is stealth. It's pretty obvious. And there's an investigation like we've talked about medicine, survival, and then look at this knowledge. Really breaks down how each of these work. Nature it has to do with the elements, beasts, plants. History has to do with the history of the world, lore, kingdoms and stuff, different factions. Our arcana is magic constructs, things being constructed and made of magic, all the planes of existence, etc. Religion is holy magic, while occultism is 
unholy magic. Religion is celestials, while occultism is demons and devils. You also have rituals of good and bad on both sides, and occultism deals with aberrations too. Then we have charisma with animal insight influence. There you go there, and then there's your awareness at the end, which it pits the whole picture. And then we have trade skills, which we are gonna get into next time. We'll hold up time out. So I hope you enjoy these little sneak peeks that I'm giving you of DC 20 RPG. And I do genuinely hope you can use these concepts and principles in whatever TTRPG that you're playing. I've gotten so many comments about people making their own TTRPGs that have seen some stuff here that I'm working on and developing, and they use that pick and choose and steal it to use it in their own. And I love that. I love that so much. And I see different applications of D&D being enhanced with certain ways. And I I've already changed my own D&D game in certain ways from uh, what I'm doing here with DC 20 RPG. So I hope these ideas aren't too outside the box for you because we are swinging for the fences here with this new game system. And I hope these help you in some way, shape or form. Let me know down below. And if you're interested in DC 20 RPG, check out and support on Patreon is the best way to help this project keep going and keep pushing it out there to launch this thing and have it be a full blown game. So until next time, stay creative. Think outside the box. Peace.